afternoon ladies and gents welcome back to another fabulous day in the woods that is correct the sun is shining we have no signs of rain and the temperature today is temperate so ladies and gents in today's video we are going to be taking a look at a new knife that has very kindly been sent over to the channel by graham at gt knives we're also going to be doing a spot of cooking today in the hazel woodland um, so for you guys that enjoy the video the cooking videos you'll be glad to hear that but yeah, today you are joining me in a very beautiful spot. This looks like a bit of an age. <laughs> so ladies and gents, in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a new knife that has very kindly been sent over to the channel by Graham at GT Knives. We are also going to be doing a spot of cooking in this absolutely stunning ancient hazelwood coppice. And that is very conveniently situated right against the riverbank here. And I do plan on doing a couple of camps here in the future, but we do need to clear a bit of the brush out first. But again, for you guys that enjoy the cooking videos, you'll be very glad to hear that today. We are going to be cooking on the Kelly kettle using the um, Hunter's frying pan. Fantastic. So I'm going to take this pack off my back, collect some firewood and get this video cracking. See you soon. Bye bye. There's just something I love about hazel, guys. It's um, it's awesome for splitting. And it's great firewood for cooking, and the tree itself is absolutely full of uses. You can create cordage, basketry, um, leaves are edible to some extent, I believe. And then obviously we've got the fire sets, the uh, fire boards, friction fire drill sets. Just absolutely loads of uses and then we also get the food off the hazel tree with the nuts or the cob nuts so satisfying just to sit here splitting call me sad but it's what i love and i might actually actually have to make a uh, chopping board out of this as well so because i forgot a chopping board so i have to put a few of these together create a little chopping board we'll save them and burn them after. Excellent. Right, ladies and gents, as I mentioned, it's a stunning area, but it does not come without its limitations. So we have no hard surfaces or downed logs we can use today. So we are going to be using a, uh, a mossy stump for cooking. But at least there'll be no risk of setting anything on fire. So. What I'm gonna do is get a quick boil out of the Kelly kettle and get some water on the go. Very much needed brew as is always the case. And now we shall uh, use the, we've got two options for cooking here guys. We've got the stove that actually sits on the top or we have got the pot rest, which actually functions as a cooking apparatus, um, like so. So we'll see what suits at the time. Apologies for the 
erratic lighting today guys I am in a wooded area and as you know sun shining through the trees can cause all sorts of anomalies it's a big word for today anomalies anomalies We're going to get this quickly fired up and figure out which way the bloody stopper goes. There we go. Arrow facing down. Jobs are good. And once again, guys, no fancy bushcraft shenanigans today. We're going to use a wax pad because they are literally 100% faultless and they work 62.9% of the time. Let's crack this a light. Oh, I said no silly bus crap shenanigans. Oosh! As if by bus craft magic, magicianism, and we shall introduce this to the pots. And that should be sufficient. We'll select some of the finest hazel kindling nature can provide. And then we'll just get this burning before we place the kettle on the top. We are scorching the moss just a little bit, not a lot. And we'll move this little bonfire to the middle. Just try and keep all the goodness inside. Ow. And then we can place the kettle over the top in such a fashion. Let's just move that one. And then things don't go to plan as normal. Let's try that again. Take two. Not fiddly at all. Let's take that bugger out. We don't need you. Or you. Right. Well, guys, this is just obviously a demonstration of how not to operate a Kelly kettle. Although we haven't scalded ourselves yet, we'll take you out as well. And you. There we go. So we'll just do that. See? Absolutely flawless. And then these join the party from the top. Listen to that. If you haven't got one of these in your bushcraft arsenal guys, I highly recommend you get one because they are great fun to use. Um, and they're very versatile as well. You've got your kettle and your cooking apparatus all in one. They're not too expensive, and that is a piece of kit that is going to last you a lifetime. <coughs> Brew's done. Now that did not take long at all. Absolutely amazing bit of kit, that. Today's ingredients, guys, we have got an onion and three finest select tomatoes and 12 classic pork chipolata sausages. 
I think uh, five of them on the muffin will be sufficient. And two beefy um, muffins, we're only going to use one of them today. The fire is burning down absolutely tremendously. Got a nice bed of coals in there, and plenty of firewood to add to it if needed. So, let's cut the onion. It's using the absolutely stunning new knife. So, thank you once again, Graham, for sending this knife. I'm very grateful. And again, we'll go over the specs on this after I've cut and cut some food with it. Absolutely razor sharp as I would come to expect from Graham. All these knives come absolutely razor sharp and every time he comes and brings me a knife he's always sustained some sort of um, injury using the knife. <laughs> it was a very nice job. for the tomato very nicely done and I'll get rid of the slot because that does not fry well I think guys we are going to keep the sausages in the round today and try and keep some of them onions in the pan. Um, I usually do slice them but can't be bothered. I think they'll be much chunkier and nicer in the round for this one. So lovely bed of embers in the bottom there. Perfect. Now we're going to add the oh check it. Right guys the oil brand is Filippo Berio, Classico. I'm just making that up. My wife will kill me. This was on the top shelf and it hasn't been opened. Oh dear. Sorry darling, um, we are going to have to use this today. Because I couldn't find the normal cooking oil. Let's get the sweet oil in the pan. Oh yeah. Don't usually cook with olive oil. I'll see how that turns out. Right guys, we should be about good. Put some of these in. Um, I do like this actual cook stand with the telly kettle because it does allow you to add um, fuel underneath it. Whereas this one, it does allow you to add the fuel but you've only got a small window there. Um, this one lets a lot more air in as well, which is nice. Keep some flames hot. Right. We've got sizzling in the pan already. Guys, the woodland coffee mission has been accomplished. Lovely and hot, we'll set that aside and let that go cold because we uh, forget about it as normal. <laughs> I would also, on that note, like to thank all of you guys that have shown your awesome support on the last video. Your words mean, you won't know what your words mean to me, but they do mean an absolutely immense amount. So thank you for all you guys that commented on the last video, showing your amazing support. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And for all you guys that reached out on personal messages as well, taking that extra step, um, it means the world. Now you guys may also be interested to know that this is actually the first time I have used this, uh, this stove and pan in this configuration. Um, I did want to save this for a video on its own, but we are doing it today, so um, I'm glad we've got out and done this. And I'm 
actually uh, quite impressive its performance at the minute. It's not too hard to keep that flame going underneath um, and the pan with that non-stick layer I've put on is holding up quite nice. So we'll get these mushrooms fried off now. Um, I don't know where the bloody hell I'm going to put them because again I've got no other pots apart from my cup and my muffins. We'll get the sausages in now because we are battling the lights. It is still bright outside but um, obviously as you know in a wooded area it gets a lot darker in here before outside so I'm really loving this knife grill. Absolutely. So after this I will go through the spec sheet and show you the knife in a bit more detail. I think we need five of these because they're only very thin and I'm very fat. I'm very hungry. Um, so yeah, five sounds like a, a reasonable number for this pan. Sizzler! And I uh, went KFC with the old man and the missus the other night and I pinched. Well, I didn't pinch, you get it with a meal, but I took it on. Um, a lovely pot of their spicy mayo and it is nice. Can't remember what it's called but it's going on the butt here. So for the moment guys the sausages are looking quite very anemic. Onions, I'm going to call done. They just have a like them nice and soft, not too brown, just caramelized slightly. I'll try and swap this down so I think this is the hottest part here, and then we'll slap the tomatoes in. Slurp of the what the hell, it's warm again. I always forget about my coffee, every time. That's going to have to go back on the stove in a minute. But I think we're almost there with this now, guys. So it's time to retrieve my spicy mayo from the bag and start applying it to the muffins. So this is, guys, the... KFC spicy supercharger mayo and this is really nice stuff <laughs> right let's get this slapped onto the muffins because we've no butter so we're going to do this in probably no style at all just going to slap this oh yeah. Smear that all over the muffin. Oh, guys, come on, ladies and gents, does that not? Now, imagine that with sausage, fried onion, and tomato. That is absolutely. Well. <clears throat> just what we're after right let's get these <clears throat> bloody hell that is spicy let's get these in the pan let's give them a quick soften up nothing too serious just release some of them flavours the tomato flavours I'm hoping you can actually hear everything I'm saying because I've took the mic off and it is just next to me. Um, but that's got a mind of its own. It either picks up sodding everything or picks up nothing. There is no in between. Right, these sausages are definitely done. And I'll bring you into the final plate up.
All right, ladies and gents, so this is pretty much what we have accomplished today. Um, I'm going to call them sausages done. I'm pretty sure they're done. They're very hard and firm to work. Um, onions are most definitely done. So let's start plating all this up on my tremendous woodland muffin. Where am I? I the big camera's upside down. Yeah. Alright, let's get this on. One sausage, two sausage. Oh, we've only got room for four. I wonder if robins are carnivorous. Would that robin like one of my sausages? Come on, guys. This went without a hitch. I deserve a round of applause for this. And it's dirty and it's greasy. What else? Get it in the camera in a minute for you guys. Oh, ah, burning mushroom. Oh, I forgot mushrooms. Check that. Oh, yes, please, thank you. Oh, that is an absolutely tremendous achievement today for me. Not been out for a while, haven't done any cooking, and that absolutely worked. Cheers guys, we've got Stone Cold Steve's Brew. And the most awesome sausage, tomato, and onion, butter, you ever did see in the woods. This is going to clog a couple of arteries, but... Mm. It's good to be back out. Oh. So nice. Alright guys, I'm going to uh, just enjoy this quietly in the corner with my brew. And I'll be sure to bring you back and we'll take a closer look at that knife. So, excuse me. Oh, bloody hell, so good. Mm. Don't tell anyone this, but you are the best sandwich I've ever had. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna sex you up. All night and make you feel good. <laughs> right, guys, so I have pinched the Robin's Perch and we are about to go through the spec sheet for the knife. And as we do so, I'll give you some nice gratuitous close-ups of the knife and sheath uh, while we talk about it. So, envelope address too. Bushcrafty Steve. Now, so guys, the knife does actually have a name. It is called the Number Three Feather Cut Knife uh, from GT Knives. This is classed as a small poachers type knife with full tang and the specifications for the blade are so we have a 3 mil thick O1 tool steel or 1.2510 gauge plate steel it is a O1 carbon steel knife we have lots of information there on the contents of each uh, individual metal in the knife but we'll go over that another time so we have a 0.8 mil G10 forest green coloured liner Bonded with G-Flex, G-Pox 650, G-Flex 650 epoxy. Naturally seasoned Indian ebony. Again bonded with G-Flex 650 epoxy. We have a 4mm oak tanned vegetable leather sheath. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. 6mm mosaic brass pins. Again, um, all the specifications of this knife are what I asked for in terms of the scale material um, and sheath. The sheath is Levitan dyed black, polished and sealed with beeswax. Ebony scales are book matched, sealed with boiled linseed oil and semi-polished with wood wax. It has a small nickel plated brass D-ring for hanging. Edge is sealed with fibings edge coats. 
it just gives you some instructions there on how to maintain the knife and as with all of his knives and tools you do get a certificate of conformity um, and this one is the number three feather coat all one tool steel indian ebony uh, liner is g10 forest and this was uh, completed on the 4th of september and the place of manufacture is manchester and this wood looks absolutely spectacular um, in the light when this has been oiled and again we've got the offset mosaic pins um, in the handle there and it just fe it does feel very very comfortable in the hand as well perfect knife for processing vegetables um, like we did before in the video as you've seen there we have a fantastic 90 degree spine and the craftsmanship on this knife is absolutely flawless and fantastic and again this gives you the feel of owning a sort of really really um, sort of medieval primitive knife that they'd use around a farm or something that's the feeling I get from it um, and that's what I enjoy about the knife so as you can see there we have the standard shiny side of the leather which is the usual case all very nicely burnished there as well but on the top side on the actual strap that holds the knife in the sheath that is reversed so we have the rough side at the top with a nice secure fastening stud there and again on the back we have the large large enough for most belts but this will be kept in the bag with my cooking gear and I think that sheath really does complement that knife So these are available on Graham's shop on his Instagram site so I will leave the links to that down in the uh, video link description and you can go and have a look at these and his other knives in his shop and contact him if you are interested yourselves. So that is the number three feather cut from GT Knives. Right guys and that about does it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed your time out in the woods with me today. Um, I really enjoyed that cooking experience today and that sandwich was absolutely sublime. I'll be out very soon again in the near future for another video. Um, I've actually started to collect a quite a variety of um, bushcraft lantern, lanterns and lighting. So we'll have a look at the different choices you can choose uh, when it comes to that. But until the next one guys, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again guys. Bye bye.